Okay. Now that you've decided what the problem is, let's see if you're correct. If you said the unit's low on charge, that's the correct answer most of the time. It isn't always. Let's find out if low charge really is the problem. Now let's note we're 13.8 split across the coil. Uh, we have 47 degrees on our suction line and 26. Let's Okay, I've set this up so you can see the saturated on this. I am evaporating at 30 degrees and I'm condensing at about 93. Our, by the way, our outdoor ambient is about 75, 76 degrees. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to Superheat and Subcool. This is a fixed orifice device machine. Although even if it was a TXV machine, the reactions would have been the same on the first video. Let's find out if it is refrigerant charge. Okay, I'm going to start adding refrigerant. You know, it's R22 unit. I'm going to start adding refrigerant by gas, and let's see what happens. Okay, I've added about five ounces of refrigerant. And what I want to do is find out if adding charge is going to change my superheat and subcool. Well, it looks like it has. Because my sub uh, my subcool is going up and my superheat's going down. And of course my pressures are going up. Let's go ahead and see if we can get this thing charged back to normal and we'll see how we come out. Okay, the refrigerator is charged back in. Our ambient has gone up to about 80 degrees now. That's also the return air temperature. So we're at 72 on the suction. Superheat is 12. Uh, 200 degrees on the uh, discharge temperature. 11.3 subcool. This thing tends to run high on subcool. This is a quite a bit older unit, and they usually had lower subcool than this. This one's pretty high. Let's also look at the temperature across the coil. Okay, our temperature across the coil is 20.8 or 20.5, whichever. Anyway, that's about where it should be. And so the unit was low on charge. That was the problem. Okay, that's all for this one.